One morning, Harrison was complaining about them so much, you'd think the brake vans and cabooses were simply thought up and built to be both a major inconvenience as well as a real pain in the tail lamp. It's not fair! Why should I have to use those useless boxes on wheels on my freight trains when all they do is just slow me down to a snail's pace? I've handled lots of freight trains back in Chuggington just fine without them. Everyone was starting to get very annoyed with Harrison. They had to put up with him complaining about a lot of pointless things that would otherwise seem to be outdated objects to being pointless from signals too. They had tried to tune them out to avoid heated arguments, as they'd often get enough of that from engines like Farnsworth and Spencer. But Harrison was trying everyone's patience. Chatsworth, most of all, who had to put up with Harrison's attitude the most. Don't be so ridiculous. We must have used them hundreds of times by now, and never had a single issue that makes us doubt their value. Not only that, I think you're just being overdramatic over the whole thing. I'm being overdramatic? If anything, I'm being underdramatic. I've had nothing but bad luck each time I have to take these useless things out to my freight trains. <sighs> Do I dare ask what sort of quote-unquote bad luck you've been experiencing while using them? Huh, <laughs> where do I even begin? Well first, the brakes on my caboose jammed hard on Whitestone Mountain Junction when I was en route to delivering the coal to my hall last weekend. I had to wait an hour while the fifty men in the brakes. During that time, I ended up causing a traffic jam and got a lot of blame for the delay, even though it wasn't my fault. Then, my brake van ran a hotbox outside Wheelerton while I was taking some sheep to a sheepdog trial near Radcliffe Junction four days ago. I had to wait two hours at Wheelerton until a new brake van was available to use, making me very late for my delivery. And finally, while I was on my way to the mainland with a train of steel yesterday, the coupling on my brake van snapped while I was climbing up Highly Hill and derailed after rolling back down. I had to wait for Edward to come pick me up over the hill. The mainland diesel called me a lazy engine because I was four hours late. I tried to explain why I was late, but he flatly refused to listen. If it weren't for those stupid brake vans, I would arrive at my destination on time. That was just a bit of bad luck, dearie. It's not like it happened to you every time you took out the freight train. Huh. <laughs> well, I'm just gonna leave my brake van or caboose behind next time I have to pull a freight train that's more than three cars long. That way, I won't be late for my next delivery or get the blame for any delays beyond my control. Hmm. I wouldn't recommend doing that. Why? Well, for one thing, my friend Percy, for a brief time, thought that brake vans weren't necessary in the year 1988 after hearing the mainland engines didn't use them. Then one day, he ended up leaving his brake van behind when he left Titmouth Harbour after the shunter got distracted and never cobbled it up to Percy's train. Percy jerked forward so quickly that halfway up the nearby hill, the coupling on the fourth car from the end of the train snapped. If the guard hadn't seen the runaway cars rolling back down towards the van and screwed the brakes hard on before jumping clear, there might have been a terrible accident. So if you choose to go off without a brake van or caboose, you might not be as lucky as Percy was back then. It might lead to a terrible accident, and given Dan Peterson's mood recently, I think he might be livid if that happened. Stuff and nonsense. Like I said, I've handled lots of freight trains without brake vans or cabooses. Fine. Have it your way, Harrison. Just don't come crying to me when you're in carloads of trouble because you chose not to listen. Harrison rolled his eyes before setting off to collect his first passenger train for the day. While both Thomas and Chatsworth were most annoyed at Harrison for his attitude, Owen couldn't help but worry. You don't think he'd really leave his brake van or caboose behind when he's not supposed to, do you? No way. Harrison might be reckless at times, but not even he'd be crazy enough to do something as reckless as that. He knows going off without one is against the rules of the railway. 
This one, anyway. Chatsworth replied, still annoyed but a little worried. But he didn't have time to dwell on the matter, as he had his own train to take. So he left to get refueled before collecting his freight cars from the docks. But Owen still wasn't convinced. 